Welcome back. It's time for week 12 of our Discipleship Character Series. Uh, we're going through our Discipleship Character book that we here at Fire in Action have put together for you. It's free. Just contact us at our website, fireinaction.com. We'll get a copy to you. Excellent tool for the young believer. Excellent tool for those looking to expand on their discipleship, something that we are all as followers of Christ called to uh, with simple yet profound messages about certain topics that are of extreme importance if we're going to walk our walk to the fullest, which is exactly what God's desire is, to not just live life here on this earth after coming to know him, but to continue to look to expand on who we are in Christ and living a radical lifestyle for him for the remainder of your days on this earth, which leads us into our topic today, because we're going to talk about one of the two places you go when you leave this earth. This body we have is corruptible. Many who, uh, all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior when they leave this earth will put on an incorruptible a body in which will never perish and will spend an eternity in the place we spoke about last week, which is heaven. So that means now today we must speak about the place where people who do not put their faith in Jesus Christ before they leave this earth go. And that would be hell. And let me point out something to you about this particular topic. Whether you realize it or not, we live in a nation here in the United States of America in which about 40% of the people that live in this country don't even believe that hell exists. We live in a nation in which 40% of people believe that everyone, when they die, goes to heaven. No matter what you've done with your life, no matter what choices that you've made with your life. And I'm here to show you and help you to understand that that's a, simply a foolish belief to believe that every person goes to heaven. And most of us, you know, when we think about our family members or those that are near and dear to us, uh, those that were uh, popular figures in whether it's the music industry, sports industry, what have you, we just assume, especially if they had a lot of money, if they made a lot of good decisions about how they treated people in their lifetime, that that qualifies them for heaven. And there's nowhere in the word of God that that is a qualifier for your entrance into eternity with the Father. Matter of fact, for those of us who believe that being good is what gets you into heaven, that is one of the biggest fallacies in all of history. And a simple way to prove that is the simple fact that there is no one who is good. How do I know there's no one that's good? Because Jesus Christ, God himself in the flesh, said that he himself is not good. In Luke uh, 18, 19, Jesus himself says, you call me good? Only God truly is good. Making a reference to him in his physical body, trying to point to the fact that us in our physical body cannot obtain whatever is actually good. Because from the moment that original sin enters into your life, you no longer can be considered good. You can be considered righteous, but not by what you do, but what, by what Jesus Christ came by giving his life on the cross, becoming the curse of sin for you, did for you. But you yourself on your own cannot be good and cannot do enough good in order to erase original sin from your life. And if you cannot erase original sin, then you cannot breach, the, you cannot close the gap between you and God the Father who will not allow sin into his presence in his eternal home. So in other words, you either have a choice. You have a choice to follow Jesus entrance into heaven or or opportunity to choose to not follow Jesus. And by making the choice, key word choice, this is not his decision. He does not decide your salvation. He gives you the, the opportunity to make the decision. The free gift is given to of salvation is given to you if you choose to receive it, but if you choose not to, then the alternative to heaven would be the eternal place that you go. And that would be hell. Understand, we all live eternally. You do not uh, leave this earth and then pass away into nothingness. Your soul lives eternity. It lives for eternity in one place or the other. And also realize this. Hell, being a real place, is not a place that God created for you. I can simply prove that in Luke 16, excuse me, in Luke uh, 25, 
The Bible says that the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons, obviously a reference to hell. Notice what it says, that this place was prepared for the devil and his demons. And you've got to ask yourself a serious question. Would a loving God who loves you actually prepare the same eternal place for you that he prepared for Satan? I think we know the answer to that. So if he did not prepare that place for you, then understand that the place he prepared for you is heaven. So if someone were to go to hell, the choice was made by them to not follow Jesus. This is why Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What did he say? No one can go to the Father except what? Through me. You cannot come to the Father unless you go through Jesus. There's many religions out there that would try to get you to believe that the God they worship is the same God we worship, that there's many different angles and ways and opportunities to get to God. But Jesus made it simple and plain and clear. The only way to God is through me. Therefore, the only way to heaven is through him, is through Jesus. When you think about the uh, consequences and the sufferings and the concerns that one will have for an eternity and you can do nothing about, if you're watching this video, I need you to understand this is the most important decision you ever make, more important than the person you choose to marry, more important than the career path you choose, more important than any other decision. You can roll all those decisions up into one and they do not trump the importance of making the decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Second Thessalonians 1, 9 says this, he will come to his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on, the, and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus. And I want you to listen closely to what this word says. It doesn't say that judgment will come on those who don't know of God. It will come on those who don't know him, who have not decided to make a decision that becomes personal, personal, decision, having become your personal savior, actually coming to know who he is and not just know of him. You can read the word of God day in, day out for the remainder of your days. If you don't confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will not be saved because the word of God says the exact opposite. Those who do confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead will be saved. Simple, cut and dry. You trust in Jesus, heaven's your eternity. You choose not to trust in Jesus. Again, choose not to trust in Jesus, then hell will be your eternity. This is real talk. This is the most important decision you can ever make. And this is a decision if you've never made, or if you're watching this and you know people in your life who have not made, today is that day. Today is the day for them to be saved because tomorrow is not a promised day. The enemy wants you to continue to believe that as long as you don't make a decision today, everything's okay. He know he says that to you because he knows one day you'll run out of today's. So I, I speak to you from the bottom and the depths of my heart, the vast importance of of taking this a strong consideration, making this decision today. And if you've already made this decision, don't waver in doubt on whether or not eternity is your home. If you've trusted in Jesus, your actions are not the thing that gets you there. It's the action that he did for you at Calvary that places you in a place we don't deserve, but we get to claim as our own. I'm going to share some verses with you right now very quickly. I'm going to do another video on these verses to help walk you through this process. Uh, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, John 3, verse 3, John 14, verse 6, and then 2 Corinthians 5.17. Walk through those verses. Ask yourself at the end of each one of them, what does this really mean to me if you struggled at all in believing with true belief in your heart that eternity in heaven is your eternal destination. And then just ask God to come in and give you revelation of what that really means, what that really looks like. 
and then make that decision. Again, today is the day to be saved because there is no promise of tomorrow. Hell is a place that God made for the devil, the antichrist, the false prophet, the demonic angels. That's who he made that place for. He did not make it for you or for me. So make the decision today to follow after Jesus and make the decision today to choose the place of eternal bliss instead of eternal torment. And if that is something that you've already cemented in your heart, today is our day to then go out and share the grace of God, because this is the hour that we are called to do that, to be the ministers of reconciliation, the ones who carry forth this message of the Great Commission. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. and. Uh, we look forward to coming back out and reaching to, to you next week with our next topic, We're moving into the fruits of the spirit here very soon. Um, God bless you. Have an awesome and amazing week. Remember www.fireinaction.com to get yourself a copy of our discipleship character series booklet and to see what's going on within our ministry. God bless you. And as always, live truth, share truth.